So let me um, welcome everyone and first introduce myself. Um, my name is Rose Wesson. I'm Associate Provost for Research here at City College. And we'd like to welcome everyone to this NYSHIP Town Hall, specifically for students. But faculty are encouraged if um, you want to send your faculty member a text or a quick email and have them log on as well. They are welcome to attend. And uh, we did a similar seminar like this yesterday, specifically for faculty members. And we wanted to make sure that students understand the NYSHA process as well. So this session is being recorded. And um, if, you, if you do wish to share this recording with colleagues, we will have it available on the Office of Research website. Um, if you go to ccny.cuny.edu and type in research, you'll be directed to the Office of Research website. And this recording will be placed there probably in a couple of days or so. The other thing, if you have questions during this um, presentation, we'd appreciate it if you could put them in the chat. At the end, we will take all questions and try to make sure that everyone is on the same page regarding NYSHIP and how do you get health insurance here at City College. So with that, I think I'm gonna introduce Dr. Alan Shi. Alan is the Director of Research Development here and has spent many, many hours trying to simplify this process such that our PhD students have health, health insurance available as well as understand how to keep and secure the health insurance that you have. So, Alan, I'll turn that over to you now. All right, thank you. Um, as Dr. Wesson mentioned, uh, this particular section, this particular town hall is um, uh, geared toward the PhD students who are appointed on the non-teaching agents appointment uh, and therefore as, uh, have the access to the uh, um, nightship program. So this will hopefully th through this town hall, uh, you will understand the mechanism better and understand the the issues uh, associated with this program and um, and then um, be able to uh, benefit from this uh, program without too much of the uh, issues that occurred during the past from time to time. Uh, so NYSHIP stands for the New York State Health Insurance Program and it is a comprehensive uh, health insurance programs for the New York State public employees. And CCNY uh, us appoint our full-time PhD student and only full-time PhD students are eligible to this particular appointment. And we appoint the students to this uh, uh, title called non-teaching agents or NTAs positions. We actually don't appoint you to the night ship. Um, uh, even though sometimes in the communication, uh, that kind of a uh, confusion occasionally uh, blend into the conversations, but um, you are actually appointed with a title of non-teaching agent at City College. And through that appointment, you then be eligible to the night shift uh, program and benefits. Um, the other eligibility requirement is that you would have to have the payroll amount in a year of 4122 or more in order to be eligible. And I will explain more about this uh, and how it works uh, in, in the next couple of slides. So again, you are appointed to non-teaching agents. You are not appointed to the night ship. And so who are eligible for the night ship? program. Um, those appointed on the tax levy line with an annual income or payroll more than 4122 or more. And that means the students, if some of you have been uh, appointed as an adjunct lecturer, or we call them uh, aka TAs, um, for appointment, you obviously get more than 4122 of support in a year. Therefore, you are eligible for nine. 
or some of you have been appointed to graduate assistant title, either it's A, B, or C, or D. All these appointments has uh, have uh, annual uh, payroll amount more than forty one twenty two. So NTA is the the one that has the least of uh, payroll amounts, and but we are using this particular uh, appointments to um, enable you to uh, be eligible for the night shift. So this town hall will focus on this particular NTA appointment. And again, it is only available to the full-time PhD students. I assume all of you in this audience right now, uh, you are one of the full-time PhD students uh, at City College. And um, uh, I'm going to uh, mute. Um, and then this allow the student to have access. Um, and then especially for those students who are now doing your research, supported by the research grants of your faculty advisor or uh, fellowships programs and so forth. And through the RF payrolls or through the RF uh, uh, stipend um, in, uh, payments. This is actually a fairly complex process, um, but a lot of them are transparent to the students, but I just want to mention some of them to you so that you understand that sometimes you run into some issues. It is not um, because of a certain department that is uh, not doing their job, but because there could be some process delays and so forth. It's not just one single department can handle all the processes. So if it is complex, um, the first question that we want to ask ourselves or we have to answer ourselves is, if it's so complex, why bother with this process? The, the issue is that full-time PhD students here at the City College should be provided with the health insurance coverage. However, if you are appointed supported for, to do research through our payroll or um, supported by our uh, by your advisor through some sort of uh, external fellowships or internal fellowships, you don't necessarily have the benefit, uh, health insurance benefit from Research Foundation because your fringe rate is just the bare minimum of it to meet the minimum required um, fringe benefits. However, uh, it is not uh, eligible for the uh, health insurance program offered by Research Foundation. And um, therefore, we appoint you to NTA, meeting the minimum of 4122 annual rates. And therefore, you can be on the NYSHA uh, health insurance program here rather than with the Research Foundation. I just want to stress that this 4122 that you are provided through this NTA appointment is not a health insurance premium. It is still a payroll. You can think of it as a job, a part-time job that you have, and that part-time job will provide you with a small amount per pay periods, and that small amount throughout the year will be more than 4122. Therefore, you still need to submit a timesheet for this payroll, uh, appointment. When you have a paycheck, your health insurance that you are eligible with, NYSHIP, the premium will be deducted from your paychecks every pay period. Therefore, the amount that you are receiving is, or your uh, faculty advisor is paying for this NTA appointment, is not paying directly as a health insurance premium. It is actually paying you for, uh, as a payroll, even though however small this payroll appointment is, it is paying your payroll, your paycheck for the work. And then part of your paycheck is pay to the uh, is paying the premiums of that cover your health insurance. The process um, I I show some um, some of the key ones and. Um, 
some of them are less relevant to you, like the invoice generation, invoice payments, even though you still pay, uh, play a part in facilitating, facilitating the process. But I want to mention about the appointment process, uh, as many of you has just gone through, and um, explain some of the issue with the timesheets and the premium deduction, especially. Um, and finally, the number five is very important. How do you terminate your NTA appointment when you are graduating? That how you work with your uh, department, your faculty advisor uh, to do that. A, a very uh, busy chart, uh, flow chart, but those um, in a gray out or more light boxes, uh, light color boxes uh, is less relevant to you. It is an internal process that several departments, several group of people have to process with these uh, steps. Um, but I want to bring to your attention is this timesheets issues. So just to give you a very brief idea how this appointment process and the whole process is, is that we started with your appointment process. And right now, your uh, faculty advisor or their assistants submit your information telling us that um, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so need to be on this NTA appointment. They submit the uh, information to us. We prepare the uh, paperwork. Uh, many of you already uh, seen these, um, PF, PAF7. Some of you may not see it this time because you are basically is uh, in the so-called reappointment and which I will explain in a minute. So the paperwork doesn't have to go through you because you don't have to provide additional information. Um, but anyway, so these appointment went to the HR, HR submitted into the system. The system has to go through many other uh, departments or even went to the Cuny Central entering into the state system. So it's a fairly um, multiple step uh, process. But anyway, let's just say that you got appointed properly. Then you will receive an email from the HR giving you some details about how to submit the timesheets, which we will uh, main, uh, discuss in more detail uh, in the later slides. But that is your main responsibility actually is submitting your timesheet timely and accurately. And I will uh, explain the implication that when you don't do that, uh, what are the implications? Some of you have seen this um, this year. Some of you may not. As I mentioned, if you are in the so-called reappointment, meaning that you have already on the state system uh, through your um, other appointments, or you have been on this NTA before, um, then you don't have to enter any other um, duplicate information highlighted in yellow because you already provided that when you were initially onboarded. And so we basically, based on the faculty submission, um, we put your information here and then uh, send it to HR to process that. But if you are the first time to be on the system, um, some of you are, and you receive an email from me and asking you to fill up the, the fields highlighted in yellow, um, and then we submit it to the HR, and HR may also ask you to complete additional uh, paperwork. But anyway, if you have been appointed properly, uh, you should be receiving an email from HR indicating how to do some intervention and so forth. One thing I want to bring to your attention is that notice that there will be social security number, there will be uh, date of birth, um, and your home address, a lot of uh, personal information. That's why when I asked you to fill up these forms, I asked you to drop it through a secure portal. And that is always a good habit, um, not to attach sensitive information like these uh, through emails because it is more uh, uh, transparent to the, the internet. Uh, so through the secure portals, when you uh, include some personal informations. 
just a, a note of cautions. So time sheet. Again, this NTA appointment is a payroll appointment. It's a job. Therefore, you need to submit your timesheets. When you submit hours onto your timesheets for the pay periods, it will be processed with a paycheck. And the paycheck will have will allow the proper deduction of your premiums, your withholdings, and so forth. And therefore, the number of hours on the timesheets do matter. Right now, if you are on individual plan and your appointment has been processed, you should receive an email from HR telling you to put in four hours per timesheets. And if you are on the family plan, it will be six hours per timesheets. That number of hours will generate enough payroll payments to you. And that amount would allow the uh, health insurance premium deductions and other withholdings. Otherwise, it become a negative. If it's a negative, let's say that you only sub, uh, submitted only one hour and it is not enough for that, uh, whatever $47 that you make for the paycheck and it is not enough for the deduction, then therefore it become a negative uh, balance on your account. And there will be a whole slew of um, implication uh, from that. So, and I will explain in detail also in a minute. So these numbers were predetermined by HR to ensure that each paycheck amount is sufficient to, uh, to cover those deduction and uh, withholding. And um, if you, your appointment may be um, completed uh, much later than uh, the first time sheet or even the, 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 the pay period's time sheet due date on uh, September, uh, September 8th or September 11th. Um, let's say that your appointment just completed. Therefore, you missed the first two time sheets. We do not want you to submit only one time sheet in the upcoming uh, um, pay periods and say it's 12 hours. We want you to submit three time sheets, including two retroactive ones and one current ones. All of them carry four hours or six hours if you are on family plan. So make sure that you don't combine hours into single time sheets if you miss one or more. Um, and make sure all the appointed hours are used throughout the periods. Remember that there is a minimum of 4122 per year for the payroll um, in order to be eligible for the night shift. Those hours ensure you the total number of hours appointed on the NTA appointment for you ensure that we meet that 4122. Therefore, it is a commitment to work that many hours. It is not an optional income that you can decide that, oh, I don't need that. I don't want to submit the time shift for because you benefit from the night shift program health insurance, but you need to make 4122 and therefore you should commit to that. Now, if you graduated um, or you are going to graduate this semester, obviously you are not going to make 4122 but that's okay, just so long as you follow those uh, scheduled uh, timesheet submissions. Now, the premium deductions. If you don't submit the timesheet, say zero hours, or fewer than the scheduled hours, let's just say that you submit zero hours for timesheets or did not submit the timesheet. Therefore, you have zero dollar for the paycheck. With a zero dollar for the paycheck, obviously you don't have any tax liability action withholdings, but the premium continue to be paid. And so the premium will still continue to be deducted even though you generate zero dollar for the pay periods. And that will induce so-called outstanding balance on your account. The way the system work is, when you submit your next time sheets generated sufficient hours, that premium for the current pay periods will be uh, deducted as, uh, as normally would. 
and then up to $100 correction will be also deducted from that pay periods to correct the outstanding balance on your account, but only up to $100. So if you have more than $100 of outstanding balance, after that time sheets, you still will have outstanding balance because it only correct up to $100. And so it will take another pay period or more in order to uh, correct those outstanding balance uh, gradually, uh, $100 by $100 uh, every pay period. So you don't want to get into this kind of um, um, outstanding balance situation because it makes things a lot complicated. Uh, during the past, um, because some of the students failed to submit timesheets, they didn't realize the, the importance of timely timesheet submission. And uh, therefore, it, many students incurred outstanding balance. And when they graduate, uh, uh, state actually sent you a bill uh, indicating that you need to pay up that much because all these premium were accumulated on, on your outstanding balance. And um, student confused with what this is about. And that amount can be in the hundred or even thousand dollars and certainly become an issue for you, for the students, and then later become uh, a, a much um, complicated discussion uh, at the college as well. So I want you to keep bring, uh, bring home with this message that Time sheet, timely time sheet submission is very important. Now, if your NTA is terminated and you have the outstanding balance still, as I mentioned, the civil service will send you a bill. And I want to let you know that you are actually liable for the payment, not the college. And I will explain why. Right? Why it is my responsibility to pay that outstanding balance, you may ask. Right. Let's using a very trivial example to illustrate this problem. And uh, your premium is not really forty dollars, but let's just say forty dollars. Um, uh, and, and using that as a as an example to do the calculation to illustrate where that extra money came from uh, and why it's your responsibility to pay that. Let's say that you're gross pay per pay period is $200. Let's say every hour is $50 an hour, even though it's the true number is 47, 42. Um, but let's say $50 per hour, and you have four hours to report for the pay period. So you generate $200 gross pay. And your night shift premium is $40, let's say. And uh, the other withholding is $10. So your net pay per pay period is 200 minus the $40 premium minus the $10 withholding. You should get a take home paycheck of 150 for the pay periods, every pay periods. If you submit those timesheets timely and accurately, the, you will get $150, uh, this uh, $40 of, as a premium and $10 as withholding. And cumulatively, you see that you get 300 total, 450. And at the end of the fifth pay periods, you take home $750 into your pocket, into your bank account. And collectively, you pay $200 for the premium throughout the five pay periods. And you have the $50 withholdings. So that's the breakdown of that $1,000 um, $1, total gross income because $200 gross pay times five is $1,000 throughout the five pay periods. And then you graduate. So you get this much money into your bank. This much money is deducted to pay for the premium, this much for the withholding. So that's 750 you get. Let's just say that you don't submit any time sheet until the very last pay period. So the first time sheets, the first pay periods, you get $0 because you didn't have some, you didn't submit any hours. And therefore, without the pay, you don't have the liability for the um, withholding. And you didn't uh, pay for any of the premium at this point. Therefore, the $40 for the pay periods 
become a negative on your account. So now your account carry $40 of outstanding balance. The second pay periods, third pay periods, and fourth pay periods, you did not submit anything, generate zero dollars for the payrolls, but your account now accumulated $160 of outstanding balance. All right. Fifth pay period, you finally submit all the hours. And now you get $810. The reason is the gross pay is 200 times all five pay periods. You still get $1,000 gross pay. It deduct that $40 for the fifth pay periods minus the correction of $100. So for the premium against your account, that's why when you have $860 left, and then after the $50 withholding, because you generate $1,000, the corresponding um, withholding may, it may not be true, but let's just using a very simple math. So in $200 is $10, so $1,000 is $50. So let's say that you deduct the $50 uh, withholding. So you actually have a paycheck of $810 from the state. So you should, in the previous example, if you pay uh, submit the tension properly, you actually only take home 750 in your bank uh, um, increase by 750. But now your bank account balance increased by 810. That difference of $60, where did it come from? It is coming from the outstanding balance still carrying in your account because you only corrected $100 for the pay periods. And you didn't have the six pay periods to make additional correction. If you have another six um, uh, pay periods, you might be able to correct the uh, $60, but you didn't uh, because you, and you're, you graduated after the fifth uh, pay period. So when you graduate your account, you go away with $60 of outstanding balance, but you also <clears throat> go away with the $60 extra in your uh, bank account. Therefore, that difference of $60 is your responsibility because that's the $60 that hasn't been deducted as normally should uh, for the premium that you should be paying. Therefore, the $60 negative is not the PIs fail to pay you additional $60. It is not the college fail to pay you that $60 extra. It's a college already pay whatever the college schedule to pay for you, except that because of the um, timesheet submission issues that trigger the $60 balance. And that $60 is actually in your bank. And therefore, when the civil service sent you the invoice for the outstanding balance, you are the one who should pay that $60. It's not your faculty or advisor should pay for it. It's not the college should pay for it. And if you have question on that, we, we will open for discussion uh, and I can explain more if this is still confusing. But hopefully the breakdown helped you to understand where the outstanding balance is being generated and whose responsibility is that. <clears throat> the other issue is the termination. Let's say that you are graduating, scheduled to graduate this December. Um, even though your PF7 uh, have a, appoint you for the whole semester, but your termination should be the date of your graduation. And therefore you should work with your uh, faculty advisor or the department staff, whoever that is, to interface with HR to submit your termination paperwork ahead of time to tell them that okay, I'm graduating December whatever, December 15th, and therefore please terminate my NTA appointment on December 15th. And you should submit this in advance so that HR will have time to process the paperwork. If you don't do that, the, the issue is the premium health insurance, NYSHIP health insurance premium will continue to be deducted every pay periods on your account. And therefore this 
negative amount will continue to grow. And um, when civil service sends you that uh, invoice, it is no longer just $60. It can be hundreds of dollars. It depends on when did you finally terminate your NTA appointment. Therefore, it is very important that you should be mindful. Uh, I already mentioned this to the faculty yesterday, and uh, I would like you to also be mindful about that. If you know when are you going to leave CCNY for any reason, graduation is the main reason, um, make sure you work with your faculty uh, and your department staff to work with HR staff to terminate your NTA appointment. They know how to do that. Um, you just need to make sure that you bring this up. All right. The other issue, which may not be entirely your issue, but you can be the one who trigger it. And that costs us on the back end uh, to process these invoices uh, a lot more uh, challenging uh, into a much harder, uh, ch uh, more challenging situation. So what happened is your NTA appointment, 41, 22 or whatever number uh, of, uh, uh, it's a cost, right? We paid for your payroll for this appointment. That particular amount would have to be recovered by the college uh, from somewhere. And usually it will be the research foundation account from the grants and so forth uh, to reimburse the college. I understand this is not something of your concern, but the problem is that particular invoice for your cost, how much cost incur from your appointment need to be um, calculated, reconciled into an invoice so that the finance department here can send research foundation um, uh, for payment request. And we will be able to pay for the invoice from that RF account. The problem is if you don't do timely, accurate uh, submission of your timesheets, finance have to wait for you to finish up your timesheet submissions. And because of those delays, it's not the only reason, but that is one of the delays of preventing the invoice to be generated in a more timely manner. And um, just for a reference, um, a point of reference is that we are just uh, receiving the invoice for the spring 2023. Um, and after so many months, because your spring 2023 um, appointment actually ends in May, but we, this is uh, September now. We just received it uh, at the beginning of September. And uh, I still see some invoices from last year just being paid in the last couple of months. So you can see the delay is very significant. And many of the reason, um, one of the many reason is that a student did not submit their attention properly or timely. Therefore, I want you to remember to submit your timesheet uh, again uh, in a timely manner. So your responsibility as a student, as I mentioned, is that you need to work closely with us um, to enable us to appoint you to the NTA uh, timely. And most of you have done that. So I appreciate uh, your in interaction with us. Uh, if there are additional issues, continue to communicate with us. But the most important part is the timely submission of timesheets. And then remember to terminate your NTA appointment upon your graduation or when you are leaving City College for any reasons. Another issue that I haven't mentioned is that most of you are on the individual health insurance coverage. But if you need to move to a family coverage because of there is an event of life, uh, life events uh, that you got married or whatever, that you need to cover for your families, you need to submit the paperwork within 30 days of events. Or you already been in family plan, but you welcome a new family member um, 
to the family and you want to put uh, the baby or whoever to the program, to the plan, then you need to uh, submit the paperwork within 30 days of events as well. If not, then there could be another 45 days of uh, waiting periods before the coverage kick in. So you certainly want to avoid that. Um, so um, make sure that within 30 days of events, um, notify HR, um, working with HR staff to, to uh, get the adjustment or correction or additions um, paperwork down properly. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, um, uh, please communicate with your advisor. And if that's something that they cannot um, resolve for you, um, work with HR or even our office so that we will be able to support you. And again, um, we are just here to help uh, to support your success and uh, be more focused on your research. So we certainly want to reduce the problems or challenges the, uh, of these administrative issues uh, for you. But uh, bear with us that sometimes um, uh, challenges still arise, but hopefully when it arises, uh, we will be able to help you uh, timely and um, quickly to resolve the issues. So uh, make sure to communicate with us. If your appointment has been um, completed, you should receive a table similar to this. This is uh, for the uh, individual plan and for the family plan, you see that the only difference is the number of hours per time sheets. Uh, so individual ones, four hours, for pay periods that you should submit. And in this particular semester, it's four hours across or six hours across. So it's fairly simple. In the spring, it is a little bit more complicated, but I don't think we should uh, get to that. Uh, we will communicate with you later uh, in the spring. Uh, the number of hours for some of the later pay periods will be increased for a reason, but I don't want to complicate the discussion for today. But I just want to make sure that you observe these um, dates and remember that your submission of timesheets also require the, uh, your faculty advisor to approve it. Therefore, make sure you, are faculty, you submit the timesheet early and then so that they give them a little bit of time to approve your timesheets, okay? Again, in the notes from HR, you will see the number three here the member occurring on outstanding balance in their account and be liable for the payment directly to this uh, civil service. Okay, so again, I explained the reason why you are liable for it. So um, <clears throat> if you have questions, you can uh, email this to the HR or you can email myself and we will try to help you to resolve the issues. So. Um, with that, I open for any questions or comments. So thank you, Alan. There are a couple of questions in the chat that I'll start off with. But to be clear, the four hours per timesheet, is that biweekly or is it eight hours? What should I put on my timesheet? It's, it, uh, it's biweekly because a pay period is two weeks. So for every timesheet, I should only have four hours if I'm on the individual insurance plan. Is that correct? Yes. And if I'm on the family plan, then I should have six hours on every timesheet. Correct. For the fall. For the fall. And if I miss a timesheet, can I put 12 hours on one? No. And I know you went through it, but tell me again why I can't. The reason is, first of all, we want to make sure the uh, record is there. And um, I will, um, I think the impact will be the same. It's still, if you miss a timesheet, it will still incur the outstanding balance. Um, but um, any HR um, staff here, so can I try to answer my own question? Sure. So if if I'm a student and I miss a timesheet 
And I therefore put 12 hours, because I'm on the family plan, on my next timesheet, then my night shift deduction, my health insurance premium deduction will only be deducted once. It won't be deducted twice. And therefore I'm behind on my NYSHIP premiums. So that's why you have to submit every timesheet so that your premiums are deducted on a bi-weekly basis. They're deducted only once from your timesheet. I got another question. Um, the payroll schedule I have, this is a question, states to put seven hours on a timesheet. Uh, the question again, I'm sorry. The payroll schedule that I have states to put seven hours on a timesheet. Uh, is this a student's question? Yes. Um, I'm not sure why the student is getting that. Yeah, we don't know where you got that schedule from, but that's uh, incorrect. I believe that's the payroll schedule for the last fiscal year, which doesn't apply anymore to the current fiscal year. I see. So for this fiscal year, we have four hours on a timesheet. If you're on an individual health plan, we have six hours on the timesheet if you're on a family plan. No in-between, no different numbers, no combo plans, no missing timesheets. That's all we got, four and six. How long before graduation is sufficient to submit the termination letter to HR for a timely processing? Javier and Daniel, that will be a question for you. Um, it's best between 45 to 60 days knowing their graduation date. Next question. Do we receive the confirmation of appointment in mail or email? I submitted my HR forms early this month, but I have no idea what happened after that. Send us an email to these two email addresses, and we will um, just, uh, we will look into uh, the status, and then we will update you individually through email. Uh, I uh, Javier, I'm sorry. Javier, um, Daniel, would this be a right email address to send to? Yes, that's correct. Um, if you have any questions, any paperwork you need to submit, please submit it to the doctoral students appointments email, and we will get back to you as soon as possible with an update. Okay. Next question. I haven't received the timesheets to submit, so I've missed already two due dates. What should I do? So let me take the first shot at this and then Javier and Daniel can um, follow up with my comments. Is that um, once your appointment, that sounds like to me that your appointment process hasn't been completed yet, um, but uh, you can send the email to the doctoral uh, um, appointment, the email address that we just mentioned, and we will check your status. And once your appointment is uh, completed, obviously you already missed two uh, submissions. And at that time, uh, you should, once the system is available for you to submit a timesheet, you should be able to retroactively submit these uh, two by paperwork. Um, Javier, is that how it works or it's online? Um, I'm not sure. Daniel, would that be? What would that be? So the, so the timesheets are submitted online through an electronic timesheet portal. I am putting the link in the the chat. So once you click on the link, you log in with your CCNY uh, credentials and um, you follow the timesheet instructions that was sent to you in your email address and you would submit the timesheets accordingly to this payroll schedule. So, if, it, if, so if, if, you're, uh, if you have a family plan, you would be submitting six hours per pay period. And if you missed uh, two pay periods already, you're going to submit two separate timesheets. And so for the retroactive ones, they also submitted through the portal. That is correct, yes. Okay, great. So not only do you have to submit, but your, your faculty member also has to approve them. 
So that's that's another step. If if you haven't been receiving your paychecks through this uh, non-teaching adjunct appointment, then you might need to check with your faculty advisor mentor to make sure he or she is approving your timesheets. Um, so my next question, where are we submitting these timesheets? I think you answered that. I, I provided the link uh, in the chat where the timesheets can be submitted. Thank this you. seems different. Uh oh, this seems different from the RF CUNY timesheet submission. So yeah. when do we get the information on this from HR? Because I haven't gotten any information from CCNY HR after the submission of the NYSHIP forms. And that's actually a very good question. First of all, it is indeed a different timesheet system. Think about you have two jobs. If you are appointed, appointed on the RF site, you have one job at Research Foundation, and that job requires you to submit timesheet there at the Research Foundation website. This NTA is a tax levy appointment. So think about it as your second job. Even though the, the payroll is much smaller, but you still have to submit the timesheet through the that um, CUNY's uh, or whatever that the portal is. So indeed, it is a two different job. You are submitting two different timesheets. And students sometimes get confused about these. They went to Research Foundation website looking for the timesheet to submit. Uh, no, it's, it should be a separate timesheet portal. And if you haven't received any message from HR, more than likely is that your appointment process is still pending somewhere. And uh, again, send the email to this email address and uh, they will be able to check the status for you and then communicate with you individually through the email. So let me, uh, we got a few minutes, but let me just try to say, why are we doing this? And Alan said, Dr. She said a little bit about why we're doing this, because you do get paid mostly through RF. That's where your primary check comes from. But RF is not providing health insurance for the students. Your health insurance comes from this non-teaching adjunct appointment. So that's the reason you're getting two checks, one to cover your health insurance and the other one covers the work that you're doing in your research with your advisor or your mentor. So you must submit two, pay, two time sheets in order to get health insurance and in order to get your paycheck from your, from your research. Um, how can I get the correct schedule? Um, you can send an email to the doctoral student uh, appointments email and we'll, we'll send you the correct schedule. Do we receive a health insurance card? You should receive it within two or three weeks once you're officially fully enrolled in night shift. Any issues, you can email me directly or the doctoral email as well, and I'll help you from there. I just received timesheets this week. I was assigned to GC last year. Should I fill some forms to HR in addition to timesheets? I'm not sure what that means. Is that a... Um... It's a new appointment then, right? Because if their appointment is at GC before, now they are appointed as a NTA at City College. That is an initial appointment with us. I, I believe I believe you're right, Alan. They they were probably in the Graduate Center last year, and they're moving over to CCNY, so that would be considered initial. And do they have to do this transfer form? Yes, they would. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. I'm receiving a Levine, Levine, sorry. I'm receiving a Levine Fellowship. Is the process different for me? Alan? I don't believe so. Um, well, well, wait, do they? Do they have a? So the Levine Fellowship, are they eligible for our program? 
Uh, I'm not quite sure. And that actually, I need to check and get back. Can I jump in real quick? Okay. Hi. Um, the Levine Fellowship is that scholarship, is that paid on the state payroll? So, I believe you might be able to unmute yourself. She doesn't know. He or she doesn't know. Okay. Um, HR can find out. As long as it's paid on the state payroll, then that makes the student um, eligible for night shift. So uh, for the, the student who asked the question, did you mind send an email to this email address and then state your question again? And that way um, they will be able to uh, work with you to uh, figure this out. Sorry, we, we don't know the answer at this point. We'll find out. By the way, Christina is also from HR. Thank you. Another question. The CCNY username is based off of the CCNY email. If I'm a transfer from Hunter and my CCNY email never works, should I check in with the department? So, um, so first you would have to activate your CCNY email in the link below that I'm going to send right now. And you would select option A and it's gonna ask you to put in some personal information like your social, your last four of your social security, your last name and uh, that type of information. Once you submit it, it's gonna ask you to create a password once you create the password, then you can log into your CCNY email. And if you're if the system still does not recognize you, then send an email to service desk and they should be able to assist you. I will put their contact information in the chat as well. Thank you. That that helped. So I think those are the questions that I see in the chat. Uh-oh. Um any other questions or concerns? So, so we recognize that this is a confusing process. We're trying to simplify it as much as we can, but we're interested also in hearing from you guys. Is there something that we can do to make the process easier for you? And we're considering how we can make improvements to this um, going forward. We probably will have another webinar in the spring just to either answer additional questions or as, as Dr. Shi was pointing out, the schedule will change in the spring, the number of hours and that's going to change. So we, we will probably have another webinar sometime in January, February timeframe. Keep your ears open. We'll try to communicate with everyone to let you know when that webinar will take place. Um, any other thoughts from HR or from Alan? Not from me, but uh, HR? Uh, no. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Yeah, no. All right. So, so I've uh, got one more that sneaked in. All right. I don't have a GC email. What should I do? Um, so I would send an email to the doctoral students email. I believe there's pro probably going to be some, probably some pending paperwork that we need to look into. So please send an email to doctoral students and we'll, we will um, get in contact with you and find out like where is your paperwork at, at, at the moment. Excellent. So again, Thank you, it's approaching 12 o'clock. So thank you everyone for joining us. If you have additional questions, if something comes up, those are the two emails to reach out to and um, have a good rest of the semester. Bye. Thank you again. Uh, Alan, can you stay on? I will. Let me uh, stop the recording.